všichni sedíme, tak za, začneme. Hello, let's start again with the final masterclass of our session. I would like to welcome Eric Schelberg here again. So let's start uh, with questions. There are many, apparently there are many questions, so if there are questions about Occupied, uh, please fire on. Well, during the preparation of the series, you probably did a lot of research. So I was curious to ask if you if you uh, asked also some military professions uh, professionals. I mean, like what would what would you do if you would invade the country, or if it's all uh, all of it fictional? Well, we did uh, we did research with military. Uh, strategical uh, people were thinking strategical within military and we did uh, research within military um, uh, scientists you know and historians uh, so yes we we did that but I think they were more down to details of how to operate certain sequences and, and, and trying to get things right we, we didn't we didn't consult I can't remember that we were consulting uh, people regarding an actual invasion because we uh, we didn't plan to make it like a big uh, in, invasion in, in, in the traditional sense uh, because the key word and that came from from UNESPA and from me first reading it was was this silk occupation idea uh, now how to make that work was down to us but 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 uh, the, the idea of that came from him uh, so but we <laughs> there was ex-military men you know we approached you know who were even high up in the system who who would advise us on strategical thinking uh, upon a military conflict uh, and how you would meet well a russian counterpart and all, all that kind of things we 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 did research and we well, we're trying to get in, tap into the minds of of how how they would be thinking. Yes. You said that the, the idea uh, of the series was uh, according to John Esbo, but uh, I would like to know exactly what was the idea. It was just only the topic, or also the characters, and uh, what do you had when you were starting uh, writing the series? Uh, do you have a do you have a final final scene uh, or lines of the characters or what? Um. You and Esper and a group of writers had been working on this project for a while. I don't know how long. Uh, I, and I don't know the exact uh, reason why it didn't work. Um, but when I was approached by the producers, they didn't have that much to show me. They had they had a they had a, a, a sketch which I think you Nesper wasn't quite happy with what the writer group had produced. So he he had gone back to an early sketch. Um, and then the TV company pulled out and the producers that uh, it, it it was it was like all parties had grown a bit tired of each other in the development process. So, uh, so the production company just got in touch with a new TV channel who was interested to do this, and and Unesco pulled out. He 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 sort of decided he wasn't going to be involved, and what we were left with at that point was. The genesis of this idea, which was, uh, what would you do if your uh, if your country was invaded? 
and how would you how would you react to it also he had a number of characters which we promised we were going to uh, keep but as far as i can remember we when when we rebooted the whole thing we kept the name of the character but we were sort of we felt sort of free to 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 do what we well, what we came up with ourselves so i remember me and the writing group we we decided that we were going to let e each of the five character main characters represent different institutions of power uh in a way, in a big way, to sort of try and illustrate what would happen to the different institutions of power when you, a democracy is, comes under pressure. So we had uh, the prime minister, who was sort of the state-elected power, um, parliamentary power, uh, if if you like, and we had the um, the restaurant owner, which was sort of the economic enterprise, the economy, uh, and then we had uh, her husband Thomas, who 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 is the, the freedom of speech, the, the the press, the journalist, media. Uh, and we had uh, Hilda, the dark-skinned woman who is sort of law, uh, a judge. And then we had HM, who is sort of law enforcement, uh, um, the uh, the one who works in the secret police. Uh, and, and that's something we sort of uh, we wanted. So we we started. So I would say we we we. We were free to, to create, and I think that was very important to me, or it felt liberating, you know, that we could sort of, uh, in a way, you don't start from scratch because someone has done something here, and, and the idea was extremely attractive, I thought, you know, uh, in terms of drama, but we were free within, to, to, to in, in a reboot, we sort of, we sort of developed the characters uh, ourselves. So you had to... Uh, free to choose the end of the first series. You don't have the the end of first on the first idea when you're beginning this, the process. No, we didn't have the end. In fact, in fact, it was a very challenging way of dramatizing, and we didn't, we didn't, we hadn't settled for an end when we started shooting. So we kept developing the scripts while we were shooting. Um, which was an advantage too, because of other reasons, which I may re return to. But, but uh, we did not have the end. Uh, we hadn't settled on an end, no. And we had no directives to. You have to end it this way. It should be said, you know, that the producers, uh, uh, two producers, uh, were involved in the development too. You know, and they probably knew. The history of it as well. Weren't you and the production uh, afraid of doing a series in such a topic because maybe you are undercovering something which uh, should be hidden uh, in front of a public? Um, if you mean that we reveal how power works and how power might work, no, I thought that was part of my motivation for doing so. Uh, it was uh, I'm interested in power and how uh, how power influences us, and in how we how the presentation of truth works. Uh, you know, in in given situation, you know, it, it is an old saying that truth is the first thing to leave when there is sort of a, a war or a heightened conflict. You know. And uh, um, no, that was interesting. Were we afraid? No, I wasn't really afraid at any point. There were there were some times during the release of the first season that parts. I wasn't. Hard, it was a little bit hard to tell. There were parts of Russian media who came to Norway and were very very aggressive. 
pursuing us, you know, and, and that, you know, uh, and we, we asked, you know, to do research and some of those fractions of the media turned out they had a violent history and stuff like that, uh, you know, and, and that, so there were a few episodes in that regard, which uh, um, was uncomfortable. But uh, you know, we I, I spoke with other press people and people who who had worked in similar environment, and they gave me advice of what to do. And uh, what about reactions from European Union? Um, the French was co-producing this from the start, and we never had any reactions like sort of we, we never received any massive criticism from the european union i think that's part of of the western european tradition that you 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 don't do it even though you would like to and you find other ways to criticize it if if you don't like it but but uh, I think that was part of what attracted the French was uh, which when when we came up with this thing of how Europe reacted because I think the, uh, the whole idea that you criticize power within your own sort of culture is 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 very common in 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 Western Europe anyway. So so it's and I, I, that was never. I never received any unpleasantries or, or, or sort of criticism based on that. Uh, do you think that uh, those TV series uh, can have uh, like uh, influence on a current political situation? Like um, if you could make a change, like a political change by making those TV series? Um, I think it's possible to heighten awareness of the political processes, uh, so you can, in a way, um, train critical thinking. You know, and I, I and I think uh, that's why artistic. That's one of the reasons why. I would legitimate doing this series in, in is to sort of um, um, because it actually comments on many ways on present society. Uh, I'm not talking about this Russia occupying Norway as such, but but the processes which is described within within a society which is put put under pressure. Um, and how how you present a political situation to be something it may not be, like in the series, uh, the the, uh, the local powers are trying to sort of paint it into something different than occupation, you know, and and all these things. And uh, I think that is that that is true to society. I don't think that we can actually, in making something, I choose to think that we will not be making politics, uh, that in a way that, some people criticized me in Norway uh, before the series was aired, and they said, this is actually encouraging Russian aggression, so we shouldn't do it, because in making this, you're actually putting the Norwegian people at risk. Um, I don't think we have that kind of power as as, as artists. I, I don't think uh, that that we are. And even if and even if we did, um, it's a complicated issue then because should we stop it because it may provoke uh, some reaction. I don't think so, in in my opinion. But uh, uh, um, but I I choose to think that we we we, we don't have that kind of power. <laughs> uh, 
And this is question from another topic. Just uh, if you can describe how are you writing when you, when you have uh, new ideas? How how is your like uh, if you have some uh, way, uh, for example, get up early and writing or whatever? Um, well, this is done in a writer's group. You know. It, it, yeah so so in within this group we meet and i think we do it quite traditionally you know we do the episodes and we put it up on sort of a board and we have like sort of oh we know we're going to do 10 episodes and the producer suggests something i was pretty new to tv i'd done one series before 10 years ago in norway and i wasn't satisfied because i was a director at that one and I was involved in screenwriting, but I did my first three episodes and then left. And I, I wasn't happy about it because I felt like it doesn't really matter if one episode is, if I'm pleased with one episode, it's the, it's the whole series as a whole which matters and which, which leaves an impression or not. So this time I, I I was actively pursuing, you know, I wanted to stay on the project in a different capacity, uh, to 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 be involved uh, in in the whole procedure, and that that's why I I sort of even though I directed the first episode, so I became more of like a showrunner, uh, what the, in America call showrunner. I, it's, a, I guess, someone who's involved in both writing, editing, directing, everything sort of has an eye for the whole sort of uh, um, series as a whole. Uh, and um, that was my most, the most satisfying part of it, I, I think. Um, in terms of mythology, no, I, we we didn't have so much. We we the the producers, Swedish producer who had done lot, lots of TV. They suggested we do a, like a three act thing, like three changes within each episode, dramatic changes. I mean, we used that as like some some kind of scheme. We it, you know we we uh, at first I wasn't. I just said yes, and I wasn't entirely sure what that meant. You know, I I, I knew it from film, but what would it mean in, within? But it sort of sustains. It's it makes it easier to sustain a structure, I think, especially if because this is this is suspense-driven uh, TV, you know, still. So, so actually, we put it into four parts, but there there are three changes, uh, changing points in each episode. Uh, so we stuck to that, and it 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 felt like that created. Uh, a good system to us, and and then we we decided we were going to follow the five characters, which I mentioned before. It became six characters later on because I realized there was one character we we grew very interested in, uh, and we said that we were going to just follow these characters and what they were involved with, and not create lots of other scenes beyond the characters. So that was a rule. So uh, those are kind of things we did to try and create. Which, which I am a great supporter of is, is just to try. If you try some rules out, maybe they, but you can't know for sure whether they are going to be a good rules or not before you sort of worked a little while. But then, if you think they work, then you, I, my feeling is I'll stick to them, even though there would be new writers on board who hated that idea because they felt like they would be easier to dramatize from another angle. But that's what I experienced in in that past series ten years ago. Is that Mm, great ideas for others uh, and in other circumstances uh, almost sort of uh, it, it could attack the identity of a of a series you know and and make it less distinct uh, and eventually sort of it would just sort of uh, everything is permissible which which works you know and 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 to me that's almost a definition of what becomes soap then uh in terms of drama if if you don't stick to some dramatic rules you know uh 
Um, I wanted to ask about the audience, um, like if you were intending it for Norwegian audiences or Scandinavian or you were already thinking about international audiences and how this maybe would influence the way that you would screenwrite it um, and then direct it. Because I can understand that maybe some things are really context driven, maybe for Norway. And if this is something that you worked with and if you feel that it's uh, maybe understandable for people living in the USA um, and maybe how this influenced you or if maybe there are different versions. No. Um, well, we had a French uh, co-producer on board, so we knew it's going to be aired in France and, and Arte and they, they have a branch in Germany too. Uh, and there was a Swedish production company, but it's still Nordic though. But I think especially the French influenced my thinking in the sense that, in the sense that I realized, you know, well, it has, we have to try and make it work for a French audience uh, somewhat, you know. To, uh, but that was as far as I, uh, when we started out. That was that. That was as far as uh, as it went. You know, uh, I didn't. I I didn't think about it that much. But the way it has become successful uh, around the world, because I think it it has been transmitted in every continent. You know, and all, all over. I didn't think. I wasn't so conscious about it, I think. When we did the second season, I was much more sort of... Uh, because, truth to be told, it 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 did okay in Norway, uh, but reviews were a little bit mixed, and they thought, no, no, no. There, there were lots of different opinions upon it. And it was only when it went international that I received the response... I thought I was going to re receive, or we were going to receive from 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 the project. So, in a way, it felt more satisfying when when it when it started to travel. Um, I, I, but I, that's not something I foreguessed, uh, although I probably should have because because we did use the Second World War as as a model for a lot of things, you know, in in terms of how people reacted and stuff, and, and, and that was part of our cultural history. Uh, uh, our country being occupied and how people reacted to it. Um, which it seemed, I think, to a lot of people in, in Western Europe, that that is a reference. Here in Eastern Europe, yeah, of course, it's very different. Uh, that's not something we, we consciously thought about, no. Uh, I would like to know uh, if this show was uh, broadcasted in Russia and if you have any any feedback from, from the Russian audiences. To my knowledge, it hasn't officially been broadcasted in Russia, but uh, they've dubbed it in Russian and put it on the internet. And it's been watched by a lot of people there. And that's nothing to do with 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 uh, the production company. That's just something which is which has happened. Um, no, I'm happy that it happened, and and um, and uh, I think a lot of the criticism we received initially, when I, because I said I already said you know there was lots of Russian media and and part of people which you couldn't quite be sure whether they were media or what kind of media they were um, who who approached us and who, who who called me personally and all these things and most of that was before the series was properly released especially abroad uh, so they were criticizing the idea of it uh, but I maintain, and, and I still maintain that, you know, we, because we didn't we didn't do what I'm going to explain now because I didn't want criticism. We did it because the point wasn't to demonize the Russian people. So from the very start, we we were sure because I think just the idea I want to make something which goes against. Uh, uh, 
the sort of typical expectation, you know, of an audience. Uh, I mean, we didn't want to dehumanize the Russian characters within the context of this series. And if you look at popular Western culture and the presentation of Russian characters, it's very cliched, I feel. So, uh, and we didn't want to go that way. So we, um, well, we, 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 were, we talked a lot about it. We, we, we made some kind of ground rules that we were not going to be able to understand their ultimate motivations like our main characters, you know, no. so we, we wouldn't be entirely able to sort of understand what would their motivation be, but we should feel that they're smart and attractive to an audience, and that you, and in a way, we would, we would try and enhance positive aspects of these characters. Uh, uh, so that's something we, 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 we made a that was a very conscious effort we, uh, we made with 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 uh, those uh, characters like the ambassador and, and other characters who, who were gradually introduced um, yeah and uh, could you tell us something more about how um, occupation universe was created yeah <laughs> um, yeah, uh, uh, the the uh, the universe was we we actually worked quite a bit. I, I nearly I think I have to draw it because we were sort of when we set up the characters, we um, we worked on sort of opposites and we worked on this. We, we created this line first, where we said um, where we said you have idealism. Uh, and pragmatism. I can't remember which way. Uh, pragmatism. Uh, and then we tried to place our main characters within this sort of line. Um, and you would find sort of like where where do you put uh, where do you put the like Benta, the restaurant owner. Of course, she's a pragmatist because she's sort of looking for ways to sort of. Uh, it's within her nature, uh, whereas um, whereas the her her husband is different. You know, he 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 works from 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 a set of ideas. And after a while, we felt like this was too <laughs> one-dimensional. You know, so we thought, oh, let's. Um, it was with discussion with a production designer. We 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 sort of said, no, let's make it into a, a diagram. Um, and we said that uh, one part of this would be innovation uh, and the other part would be tradition. Uh, and then we would, um, we would, because what what we're describing at the beginning of this series is 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 a nation who, who's decided, or or voted to be, and 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 are sort of in the process of innovation. You know, we want we want to get rid of the oil dependency and uh, are looking forward and stuff. Um, and then, of course, but you're based on the tradition, and the and that. Uh, the Russians, when they came, they were more interested in, in our traditions uh, because it's it, it's based on a tradition. And, now, and within this, um, what do you call it, uh, diagram, we started to place our characters. So we would put uh, um, we would put Benta, you know, restaurant owner Benta here. Uh, we would put Thomas. Um, who I think uh, we put, oh, I can't remember, I think we put him here. Um, and then we put uh, Jesper Berg, you know, here uh, and stuff. Um, and uh, and we had like this, did this, uh, all characters fitted in here somewhere and, 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 and would be moving at one point or another. And then we said, um, and then we sort of worked on, you know, what does it take 
before you before you decide to uh, to oppose a certain political situation like this um, I, I kind of was inspired by by uh, by the song which Janis Joplin sang, just the tagline, you know, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose, which I heard on the radio by coincidence. And I thought, oh, that, this is this is really uh, something which rings true to this universe. So, um, so we, we we decided we were most interested in the characters who didn't I immediately would go would would make resistance because. Statistically, 90% of the population don't make resistance to, to, to such a radical change in society, and, and that, that's an historical fact. Um, whereas in fiction, you know, a lot of energy is put on the last 10%, who, who are the sort of classic hero characters. Um, so we sort of mapped out, and, and uh, it's like with the Prime Minister, he, he is an idealist, but he turns more and more pragmatic in order to sort of just handle the situation uh, up until a point when he may be getting to a breaking point. I don't know whether I probably shouldn't sort of reveal the plot of it, but but that was, uh, that was part of our uh, sort of, um, uh, of planning. And, and then we used this for for production design and for other purposes um, so, so that was very helpful in creating uh, as, uh, the universe of, of occupied as such and your fictional word uh, what about uh, uh, the politics uh, on a word stage, uh, what what had happened before your show starts? Uh, because uh, we've heard that the USA are no longer part of the Atlantic Treaty. Uh, so could you tell us what happened before? Uh, we had to make it actually to make UNESCO's uh, you know initial ID work. We were sitting for quite a while to try and work out well how can you make that plausible uh, and uh, and then we were discussing political processes going on this was in 2013 I think uh, so one of the uh, things we thought would be um, what well, we, we talked to a lot of sort of expert on foreign politics and stuff you know and 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 we and we decided that uh, America had elected a president who was very protectionistic and who didn't think it was beneficial for their nation's interest uh, to to stay in NATO. Uh, so NATO was like sort of, uh, so they pulled out of NATO, in which case NATO becomes a, a European uh, uh, defense mechanism for uh, so that was one thing we 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 decided upon, you know, and it's just said in a line in the first episode. So the next question is, uh, if you do a very radical change to our society, oh, how do you play it? But but that's that's I guess the next thing we we decided just to play it. Well, I think it says in in the writing before, but 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 uh, but how do you mention it? Um, what else? We we used a lot of in terms of characters, especially the political characters. I would try and look for some kind of concrete example of uh, because it, because it's a good way to model. I felt and and, it, it, and I want the actors to sort of own their character and 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 and, and take responsibility for them. So. I, I would normally be looking to find a, some kind of role model and see what what would fit. With the Prime Minister, we, we looked at uh, uh, Tony Blair. Uh, we discussed others, of course, but eventually I felt like Tony Blair was was good because because of his enthusiasm and sort of idea of of, of, of being an innovator when he when he first came to office, and then. Eight years later, he, he he would 
invade Iraq on a false premise. You know, it 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 just felt like he he was he 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 went through some processes which, in, while being in power, which are I found interesting and 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 were relatable to to the prime minister. And I guess we did similar thing to other characters. Um, to, to to give them some kind of very concrete um, thing to, to play upon. And uh, according to my opinion, the media in the series have like something like a crucial role. Could you explain how to use them? Um, do you mean the the character Thomas, or do you mean, or do you mean the, the in general how media is? is, is a of media. Yeah, uh, Thomas. He. Now what is I'm trying to sort of recall. He's he's. Um, um, well, one thing we decided when we looked at these characters and we looked at the premise and we said all characters, we made a rule, all characters are going to benefit from the occupation somewhat. Uh, in a sense that they were going to, something was going to happen which, which, was, which, which was beneficial to them one way or the other. Uh, and for Thomas, you know, he's a, he's he's a struggling media is struggling. A lot of people in the media is struggling at the moment in in, in Norway for, for sure. You know, the the internet revolution has uh, has has turned everything upside down. Uh, so he's become like sort of old fashioned, old school. You know, <laughs> but but he's an ide idealistic. And he holds actually he should be there. You know, come to think of it, because he because of his. He is within the tradi tradition, uh, and and the and the occupation offers him some opportunities, which um, gradually through the process of that season means that he, he his relationship with uh, his wife, who has different interests, you know. Uh, is, is is more and more tested uh, because um, well, looking for truth within a, such a political situation is both dangerous but also very engaging for a, for a, for a character like him. Uh, um, but um, well, I'm not, I don't think I, I, I don't think I don't think I should reveal what happens later on, should I? No. <laughs> okay, okay. I have two questions. When you said that uh, occupation benefits all the main characters, so what's the main benefit for the prime minister? Because I don't see one. And uh, the second question: How many more series are you planning to make, or if it's a definite? number or if it's in progress and negotiation? Um, we have finished the second season. Oh, we're just finishing the second season uh, of Occupied. Mm, it's always a process of will it be financed next and what have you. Maybe we'll do three seasons. I don't want to do more than three seasons, uh, even if I have the opportunity. Uh, but I don't own the projects as such, so I don't know. Um, what's the benefit of the prime minister? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> I really can't. I would have to look up what we had in mind. But uh, he uh, obviously is the one who's... Uh, Whose, whose illusions are, are, are shattered, you know, <laughs> some way or the other. Could you tell us more about the creation of the screenplays? Because you just told that you don't know if there will be any any more episodes or third season. So how do you approach the story so you can kind of finish it because the end of the season, but you still don't know if there will be one more maybe. So how do you, how do you approach the creation of the story? 
It's an interesting question. I, I, uh, a friend of mine who does feature films, uh, he, he sort of <laughs> criticized the whole idea of TV because he says, well, it never ends. If you're successful, it never ends. So it's not satisfying uh, from his perspective. And uh, that is sort of a valid criticism of, of TV if you think the ending is the most important part of uh, of a dra of a drama like that. Um, I I I'm not so sure. I think it's be a bit like life. We don't know where it ends <laughs> before uh, before all of a sudden. But uh, uh, so it, it, TV leaves you with the opportunity to sort of work on them thematic ideas and so on how you can sort of uh, explore them. But the reason I said, you know, I, I probably wouldn't want to do more than three seasons is that I feel we may want to start repeating the pattern. So these characters and, and, and it's, it's like you, you, you strain the, uh, the, the, cre the, the creative ability. They, they've, they've gone this far or whatever. Um, we... Within a season, or especially now that we've done the second season, we, we, we discussed where we have the characters and where we wanted them to end that season. Uh, and we discussed that from from basis of... We, we used to have sort of taglines on, so on our main characters. Um, it's like with H.M., the policeman, uh, that he uh, uh, that in that he scares the people he wants to protect. So there's that often that sort of a paradox. Uh, um, the judge, the woman is uh, uh, is she, she loses faith in her own judgment. Um, uh, I, I can't remember all the, all, all the lines, but but we we use that kind of because there there is like some kind of paradox in it, um, and and uh, and we try and develop the characters from on the basis of that, and then well let's say for the second season we wanted to try out working on 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 on, uh, on, on a new general concept we 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 got better at it the first season we were just because because actually this was a project which was once we had we had started convinced everyone in financing that we had a good start we had what i called like sailing with the wind behind us so it was hard to sort of uh, because we had so much wind that uh, if we were inventing as we went along uh, which is a incredibly stressful and incredibly rewarding way to work i find because i love the whole uh, uh that kind of balancing act of sort of walking the line as uh, uh, but you don't know where where it's gonna end um so we didn't i think like i described we didn't have the end as uh, as we started but then you know a lot of things happened in the world while we were shooting it which was inspirational too um, second season, we promised the producers and everyone we were going to be better able to plan it. And I'm not sure the producers would agree that we managed it, but uh, uh, in my my feeling is still that we had more control of where we wanted the characters to go and, uh, and the ending and stuff. Uh, so... Uh, the best way is to, to it depends it, uh, for me who sort of uh, am more interested in the character no matter what you know I, I'm not saying that the political aspect of it or, or the universe and everything th that's important too but it's the way that the character navigates in that world which is most important to me I think the best thing is to, f to, to figure out where you want the characters to go and what we did map out in the first season is when do the characters feel like they have nothing to lose by going into resistance? Or, 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 or is there such a point for these characters? Um, 
but and and that was something we tried to map out. Where do you think that would happen within a ten episode uh, process? Screen probably. Yeah. 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 So with screen, actually, uh, I need to say something about this for those who haven't seen it. This, what you're going to see here, is is the we see the pol we see the head of police who became one of the main characters, uh, and she and HM are interviewing what they call what they suspect is an ideolo uh, ideological leader of the resistance, one person who doesn't engage in terrorist activities, but actually are uh, promoting it and, uh, and, uh, and um, recruiting people to do so. And they're questioning him. Can you come here? He is the guardist who tried to shoot at Sydrova. Om vet jag vem är. Sigurd? Ja. Jag antar att han var involverad i terroraktionen mot PST. Jag kan föreställa mig att där där det är ett forskningen. Bild av en ung känd gutt. Vi ser sig till det att vi vet att gardisten stod bak bomben. Är det stant att bomba PST? Det skulle jag tro. Vi har sett videon där du försvarar oss. Nej. Försvarar inte terror. Kan du försvara det? Det jag försvarar är enkelt mänskets rätt till själv och värdera vilka handlingar som är nödvändiga utifrån denna historiska kontexten. Vilken kontext då? Än den situation vi har nu, där regeringen och de styrande organer har mistit sin legitimitet. Mm. Fritt Norges handlingar är självförsvar mot en ockupationsmakt. Det vet du gott. Vad uppnår man med bomben? Bruk fantasin. Skapa frykt. Skapa hopp. Kan man man ramma hvis man vill skapa hopp? Är du törst? Och vem kan du äntligen vann? Tack. Off the record, eller? Min kollega här. Han kommer till att få dig att svara på vilken typ av aktioner du stöttar. Och låter som det är helt hypotetiskt. Och så fyller du här dig själv så kommer du till att svara på det bara för att visa hur smart du är. Visst du svarar på det så vill han kunna få dig siktet för uppvigling till terror. Fara för rikets säkerhet och få full övervakning på dig. Så vad menar du att fritt Norge tränger? Det är fritt Norge tränger. Det är folk som är villiga att offra nu. Som inte har något tap. Tack. Um, well, I wanted to to show this because it sort of leads on to the uh, concept of when are you prepared to make resistance and in which way. And there's something to say about this woman who's the head of the secret police. Um, she was first, in our first drawing, she wasn't the main character and then, but she was still thought of as someone who was working for the other side uh, in terms of police work. But it dawned on me that we had made a mistake in our initial planning by not showing her motivation and her turning point. So this is the fifth episode and uh, I think we had shot the third and the fourth and we were in the process when we realized this and we had to sort of write this scene 
uh, and sort of turn everything around in her because we, uh, in her character. She, it was just because you, it felt like you couldn't work with these main characters with hidden agenda like that. Uh, uh, it just didn't work within the concept. Uh, Russian characters, fine, they, they uh, because you because you're supposed to guess what if they have any ultimate intention which are different to what they say but um, but she it felt false and it felt like you wouldn't be able to fully identify or understand her uh, so that's why we we changed uh, this and, and, and created this scene I guess that's that was one advantage of being very late in in or, or being able to improvise and do changes while we were in the midst of, of, of making uh, a series. Um, yeah. Uh, I would like to ask you um, a practical two questions. Uh, one is the practical one. How does it work in the writer's room? Um, how many people work there? Uh, whether you have been uh, each working on one character or you have been developing the scenes together, uh, whether you divide work uh, and then revise it somehow? And my second question is, do you have a favorite character? And if yes, who is it? Um, do I have a favorite character? Mm, yeah, I liked, not really, I like them all, but, uh, but uh, I like the, the, the restaurant owner, the woman, uh, a lot. I feel like she, <laughs> she has this... Um, way of navigating according to everything which changes and I, I can understand that. Um, in terms of uh, how we work, we um, we worked with, it, it, it wasn't a set plan, you know in the beginning it was set like three riders and me and then I think we worked it was hard to crack this exactly how we were going to do it. So some writers left for other projects, and it, we we were left with one woman called Karianne Lund and me, and she wrote all episodes uh, at one point. She she would write through the whole episodes, and then as we were shooting, I would do rewrites. Uh, because I would be more sort of attuned to how the director and, and everything happened, you know, and we would we would keep working on that. Um, in terms of writer's room, we were notoriously late in writing this. So, so first we started out with three writers, two of which uh, had to go and do other work, and we had just finished writing three or four episodes, I can't remember. So we were scrambling to get, we got young writers in, and we, for quite a while we worked with a group of young writers, and her, and me. Um, and these wrong writers, some fitted, or, or was, was well fitted to work with this combination of politics, characters, and, and, and thriller, you know, elements, so they stayed on, but some didn't. Um, often they would come up with ID and maybe write like a first sort of treatment. Uh, I would comment on it, I would write another treatment, then we would leave it on to the main writer to write the, the, the script. Uh, and and then me and her would continue doing so. Uh, one young writer came in and did some episodes all the way through. So it was it, it was it was we didn't work with a set system, um, which had benefits, but was tricky. Second season we decided it's going to be two writers all the way through and me. Um, one of which was the woman I work with, you know, and we're co-creators, um, which also worked. Uh, but I kind of started missing this crazy atmosphere of these, some of these young writers and writers who came in and out, you know, because it, some of them came with really good ideas and made us turn things around a bit, you know, and and and, and found ways to sort of integrate what we uh, had in mind. So uh, uh, I don't know if we're going to continue what 
what, what, what system, but I, I would probably rather work with, with more than two set riders, you know. And in terms of the story, how were you approaching? Like you, in the, if you started with the kind of basic story for the whole series and then worked on the episodes or were you approaching one episode, second episode, third episode, fourth episode? I mean, the overall story, how were you finding it? Well, I think it's quite sort of traditional that you work on the you work on the overall idea of the series, especially for the first season, for a while, and then you just start working on the first episode, and you need to convince the financiers that the first and maybe second episode works for them to pay the fi the thing to, which gets you going. I think that was similar here, uh, which means that we fulfill the first episode, the one you saw, uh, and maybe the second to some extent. Uh, and then the rest we, we just wrote like so, some kind of treatment for, uh, which I think if I look back at it, you know, that treatment doesn't quite hold true to how we, how, how we ended up doing it. Because we, one thing which which has been tricky, which have happened both times, is that I've directed the first two episodes in this and the first three episodes in the next season. And while I'm out shooting that, I, I don't have the same attention to the development. So, and then I come back in and, 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 and start messing about with things. So, maybe, so we've discussed maybe it's better if I don't direct the first, but direct the last episodes. Uh, if I'm that in, involved, you know, and, and and there are very good reasons to to think that, uh, that that's true because it's it's basically not physically possible to both sort of do the conceptual direction and do the show running simultaneously. You know, it, it's it it uh, something has to give then. Um, Oh, God. Did I answer your question? <laughs> uh, hi. Just out of curiosity, I mean, uh, when creating such a universe, I feel like uh, you kind of have to uh, place yourself in the character's shoes. So I just wondered uh, whether you, th you thought about what would you do if such a situation happened in Norway? Um... I think I would daydream about being that hero, you know, you see in the second episode, who sort of um, decides to be the first to do resistance. But that would never be me, for sure. Uh, and I would be one of the 90% who, who would try and find a way. I would sort of look at it from different angles and and try and sort of think well maybe this isn't too bad try and sort of look for ways to um, uh, uh, to maneuver within the system uh, maybe I would I would definitely be critical of the process but it would take me time to sort of try and figure out what to do and I would navigate in a way that I would as long as possible try and be sure that I was still on the legal side, even if I resisted uh, the processes going on. Um, yeah, I'm definite that that would be <laughs> where, where I would end. I would like to ask, uh, how are you thinking when you're also directing, but especially when you're writing, uh, with the, uh, how to phrase it, uh, with the knowledge that the uh, audience will uh, for a part, like no more than the characters, because for example, like um, for example, when the st series starts started airing, like uh, it's called Occupied, and uh, at least we, uh, we, as viewers know the premise. Yeah, it's one of the reasons that's the that's the catch why we want to watch it. Yeah, this is going to be about uh, Russia occupying Norway, so we have this kind of like tension before it actually actually comes, and maybe the same also uh, goes for Nokas. Yeah. Be Especially, at least in Norway, because a lot of people know like what's going to happen. So, how do you approach this when when writing? I think I learned something through the process of making Nukas, um, which was part, which was inspired by some films I'd seen. Even back at film school, there was a Robert Bresson film called, in English, called 
condemned man escape which is about a guy who escapes from prison and it says in the title that he's gonna escape but it's one of the most tense films I've seen because you sort of I was just so drawn into how is he gonna do it and even though the title says he's gonna be able to escape I'm still I don't know, for some reason, very tense about his situation. So the identification is very, very strong. And I felt a little bit similar to watching the United 95 or whatever this film, which which Greengrass made out of uh, the 2000, the September 11 plane. Uh, so it made me realize while making Nukas that you know we should put out put it up front what's going to happen uh, because well the audience knows it anyway in Norway like you said and 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 that doesn't mean that you can't create suspense uh, in my view um, when it comes to, to occupied yeah you're right uh, and when we first edited it we tried to get to the to the kidnapping very early on I, I was rushing it in the early edits and my editor sort of told me well you got to be patient now because you got to trust the material even if people would know this you, you, you still need some there's still room to sort of get to know the characters before it happens because it's it's to do with yes it says it's gonna happen but how and when it happens is also some kind of suspense element. Uh, so, well, it, it, but that's not something I would think if I hadn't experienced it while watching other movies. Uh, and I think when you're in the screenwriting process, you, you often sort of, well, you can lose faith in your own ideas because you're you're they're always questioned with a critical uh, with, with, with from a critical perspective and the one thing I think about screenwriting compared to directing is is that screenwriters you write something out of nothing and very often it's the first reaction is a few sort of um, positive phrases which are a little bit sort of non-engaging but are said and then a lot of criticism and then you're sort of asked to go back and do it again and you do it again and the same process happens uh, uh, so you, you sort of beaten up again and again and again uh, and then when a new series and when the same people we're looking for some new oh, you think well who's good at writing and you go back to some of these people <laughs> who you know can actually manage that <laughs> process but uh, it it it's part of the pressure of being a screenwriter is that you get uh, you get beaten so much uh, by this uh, it's so easy to criticize uh, and and uh, you need thick skin uh, to be able to to withstand that and 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 remain faithful to an idea of of how how to do it, uh, and that 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 is that is a vital quality uh, if you want to succeed as a screenwriter for sure. And back to occupation and um, how did you actually? And create it, uh, create uh, the time perspective in which universe of occupation worked. Oh yeah, that was one idea which we looked upon because the initial idea was like, well, let's jump into it six months after it's happened, and that didn't work when we started to dramatize it. We jumped to sort of saying, no, we need we need to see this to believe it in a sense, and and and, and to get a sense of of a starting point. But we still wanted to dramatize political processes, you know, and, and so I remember coming up with the idea. It's a bit like you look at the pattern, you know, and, and I was looking and you, you, you look at this a wall where the episodes are sort of brown pieces of paper sitting down. 
I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, we got to jump a month for each episode. This is one of the liberating things about TV series is that you can create a form. And I must say, in my experience, TV drama right now is in a golden age of some sort where there is optimism from the financiers and from the producers. More than I've seen in feature films for since I started. When I first started in the 90s, maybe it was because I was young, maybe it was because of the times, I had this sense that people would sort of say anything is possible, you know, and really mean it. Uh, and there, it is a certain quality about the development of TV drama right now, which where people have that belief, or you will be able to convince uh, people to finance you. It's possible. Whereas in feature films, mm, I, it, it, it's harder right now. There isn't an optimism. There isn't like this um, uh, in innovative uh, f uh, period which you have in TV drama. So in TV drama, you can you can actually make these rules, which because we were thinking, oh, have you seen that before? I'm not saying it's it hasn't happened before. It probably has, you know. But we no, I can't remember. Anything. But it doesn't matter. We'll just try it because it should work. Uh, and to work up these kind of um, processes, you know, sort of uh, of trying something. Is 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 within the form of TV drama is is is, is possible now? I feel, uh, and I, do, I I think that's a period. It's in my experience, it's not going to last forever, <laughs> but uh, but right now, it, it, there is that possibility. Was ask. And did you find any inspiration uh, during the research among uh, former Eastern European countries, like the Czech Republic, who experienced actually Russian occupation? We discussed it, um, but we didn't. Uh, we didn't go out to sort of uh, uh, to try and invest. To get it, you know, in a sense. So, so it 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 wasn't it wasn't like a a key um, part of our uh, of our planning. You know, it, it's like I said, it it just dawned on me when the producers came in when they started selling it. They said, "Well, all the Eastern European countries are interested, you know, in buying it." Uh, uh, said, oh yeah, of course. Uh, so so you, you realized sort of. Then, uh, and I must say, I, I've, I've been interviewed by quite a few sort of TV interviews coming here, which I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't fully aware of how popular it seems to be. You know, uh, you know. So it's, it's not. Of course, I'm, I'm aware that it's, that, that it's. I think it. it, it sometimes you, bit lucky with things. You have an idea, and, and, and it sort of hits, hit a nerve. Uh, which it has been in many places, but maybe here in 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 these parts of the world, it 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 um, it's more than a nerve. It's probably uh, a central nervous system <laughs> kind of thing because because it's it, it's because of your history. Uh, and I remember I, I actually visited Prague when it was part of the Eastern Bloc, and and I I, I remember that very clearly that. Um, this feeling that it's because because I was when we I was very young. We came to the train station and we were invited to come and there was someone there and they said uh, and they said you could stay at our house. Uh, so we stayed at 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 their house and and I remember thinking you know there's uh, there's limitations to what you're able to express. Uh, within the, that society, but there are a lot of. Uh, <laughs> uh, it doesn't stop you from thinking because we had all these discussions, and it doesn't stop you from uh, 
from developing a critical mindset or something. So, so, so maybe that I, I, I can't say whether that was part of me in creating this, this but that was that was definitely an experience which I which I had. Okay, okay uh, but um, it's running of time, so last questions. No one. Okay, I have. Uh, so. Um, to introduce season two, where it's gonna be to air? Um, yes, I'm gonna show you the. Let's let's show them the 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 uh, the teaser for the second season. Okay. We could do that. It's just a trailer. Um, well, let's do that first, and I'll talk a little bit about it. Det vi har upplevt det sista året i Norge med terror och våld det har förändrat oss, det har gjort oss rädda. Det är inte alla ryssare som är mördare. Jag måste fortsätta att hålla liv i mig och Maja. Jag har blivit spurt om att bli statsminister. Du kommer till att bli spist upp som en liten mus. Vi är här. To protect you. It was without. <laughs> I didn't realize it was without subtitles. Uh, but. Um, second season begins in Norway in. Well, 20, 29th of September. Um, what's there to say? I, a second season is a diff difficult and different uh, um, thing to do because we didn't plan for a second season when we shot the first. Uh, we didn't. We didn't. Well, actually. That's true and not true because we went over budget on the first season. <laughs> and I remember talking to the producers, trying to convince them that they needed to keep financing the first season in the middle of this production. And I remember saying to them, well, never mind if you're not going to make any money on the first season, you can make money on the second season. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I really believed it at the time. I was just a, a way to try and convince them that we could finish what we were doing. Um, but um, I think uh, this is this is part of making TV series. Is 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 part of this? If you make something which people respond to positively. Uh, you get the opportunity to do a second season. I must say that when we started doing the second season, I had to ask the French produce, uh, production company, Ashita, who, who does a lot of TV series, I had to ask them, so tell me a second season which is interesting. <laughs> you know, because I, I looked at quite a few of these series and I, I felt like I watched the first... Uh, season and then I watched two episodes of the second season and I stopped uh, with some exceptions and I was trying to sort of work out what what those uh, exceptions actually would know uh, uh, what would you need to do to try and sort of uh, reinvent and and because you you're watching a TV series because well, one thing they said is, it's just a simple rule, they said, well, people are attracted to the plot, but they stay for the characters, in a sense that if you created some characters you want to root for, you, 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 you that, 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 that's part of your, uh, your, your capital, in a sense, that's part of what you, uh, what you have. But I also think that in order to, in, in this case, you know, when we started making the second season, we we wanted to, um, we, we sort of think, well, okay, we need to change some of the premise 
of of what the outer threat is to this society uh, in order to sort of so we jump off a year i'm not going to talk so much about uh, about uh, exactly what happens you know and all that because it's because it's uh, if you're going to watch the rest of the, the first season maybe it's it, it, there there there's lots of spoilers there um but um yeah it 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 it's it's actually from a creative point of view it's somewhat challenging to do a second season because you you can easily f start doing the same again if you're not very conscious of that fact uh so yeah um okay <coughs> And uh, when are you going to release it? Uh, it it is being released in in Nordic countries. It it goes straight to this stream format, you know, uh, because they paid most. The first season there was a TV channel who paid most. This is indicative of our times. Uh, the second season is paid most by a streaming sort of. A, a, a competitor to Netflix in the Nordic uh, arena, and they pay the most, so they get to release it first. Of course, that's part of the logic. Uh, and I don't know. I think they have a certain certain amount of months, you know. But 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 for the rest of the world, it's mainly to do with France. France, Arte are the main co-producers, and they their TV. TV broadcasters and they have to premiere it before the rest of the world. I think Netflix has bought it in lots of countries. I don't know about the no, here it's the state who, who, who TV channel who, who, who did the first who broadcasted the first season. Um, I don't have all the details of who 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 have bought it where but um, I know I know that it can't premiere before after January because France sort of has a has a lock on that, having been involved. One good thing I I would say a good thing about you know uh, about streaming uh, facilities. You know it, it's it's this thing because Netflix really made this series popular in in America uh, and in in uh, in Canada and other places. You know. And a good thing about Netflix is that it creates for a small series like we are, you know, we we are we are like a foreign language small TV uh, series, which is really hard to break into uh, such a market. And then, but if you have something which people like, then then word of mouth actually works. On on uh, on on the stream, like like Netflix, because because it's always sitting there and you can watch it when you want, and people would Twitter or whatever, so it would gain a momentum which is hard to do in cinema because of the opening weekend is 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 so important to cinema, uh, but for TV dramas you have. The grown-up audience is, is is has to to has gravitated towards TV series, uh, which gives you opportunities because you can you can actually work on quite complex material and 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 they will respond, you know. But uh, but especially this streaming thing uh, has some benefits for sure, which uh, which I will embrace, you know, because it's uh, I think just the ability that you can watch it, you can binge watch, or you can watch it when you want. Is 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 a good thing if you're outside of the mainstream, which I we're not outside of the mainstream in Norwegian context, but but in the world context we are because I would think most Czech TV series, if you go into the world, you know it 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 will be uh, it will it will be the same. It it's yeah. So if the 
second uh, producer is the streaming channel. How is the coverage of the streaming channel in the Norwegian in the, in Norway? How how will be the difference for the for the Norwegian public when the first series was in TV and the second is only on the internet? Um, it will not be viewed by so many Norwegians simultaneously at the premiere weekend because it's a pay uh, it's a it, it's a reasonably new pay platform you know you have to pay to to gain access so it will be strange uh, because it will be strange because we will release it and I don't know how many are going to see it, and it's going to be dependent on if people word word by mouth, you know, and then they will see how many customers they get, you know, this streaming to try to try and take stock of whether it, it, it it's a valuable investment or not. Uh, it's new to me to to have a premiere that way, so all I can say is for the rest of the world, it really worked. To a, to a benefit, but I didn't have so high expectation for the rest of the world. I, I, when, when you do a Norwegian TV series, you're just uh, uh, you're just happy to get it out uh, around the world. You, you 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 don't question whether you know this TV channel is better than a, than a rival TV TV channel. All this stuff. But whereas in my home continent, it it yeah, it will be strange to premiere it that way. But it must be said, you know, when I did the second season, I was thinking much more globally because I felt very confident by what we, by the reception we got around from around the world of the first season. So I just felt like uh, it's not we're not so dependent on on the local reaction, uh, and that felt liberating. I felt like okay, we we don't we we don't have to cater for, for, for a certain bit, uh, kind of audience within Norway, you know, to, to, to justify this series. Um, so, and then we'll see what's, uh, how, how that's going to ha happen. I, I feel like, from a creative perspective, I feel like we're in the midst of a total media revolution. And as long as I keep creating stuff which I'm interested in myself, I feel privileged. And if if whoever finances it, uh, well, uh, I'm not talking about their ethical background of how they earn their money, I don't know, but but uh, but just from the whatever platform or whatever, it's not so important to me. Uh, the important thing is that someone is willing to do it um, it's because I, I actually think I've I feel like a circus artist you know from the old times you, you just you just uh, you just look for who is willing to pay for you to 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 do the, to do your tricks <laughs> and, and then and then you <laughs> and as long, as long as you you're able to keep to, doing some new tricks, hopefully you know <laughs> I feel lucky. Uh, so yeah, that's I guess what I can say about it. So Eric, thank you very much for your answers and to be here. So.